what will be that turns out cigarettes are bad for us of our generation. This will get super buried. Children's play is being increasingly cut out of schools and early years programming in an attempt to cram in more academic content. Thing is, young children learn more from play including academic skills than from classroom settings and flashcards. We are going to see much higher levels of developmental delays and mental health issues over the next few decades unless something changes soon. Edit, okay, so it turns out this didn't get buried at all. You can stop messaging me, commenting about it now. Cheeky smiley face. Living an easy life. Seriously, it's becoming evident that our lifestyle with little meaning or struggle has caused our depression. It used to be if you toiled in the field with blood sweat and tears all day, you put food on the table at the end, you felt successful and happy. Now you just go to a boring job for 8 hours and you can put food on the table and you feel no gratification in having that food, so you have to dream bigger. Now you're not successful unless you have a big house, 5 cars, a successful Instagram or YouTube channel, whatever you decide you want, but the problem is it's all a hell of a lot harder and rarer than just being able to work in the field, come home and have a nice meal for the family, so a lot less people will ever have that happiness. Smoking wax. I fucking love taking dabs but I'm pretty sure my generation is going to be the poster children for the don't smoke wax movement iPads for toddlers and young kids. While it's true that there are educational apps, time spent playing with the tablet is time spent away from learning through real-world interaction. There are some studies that suggest that television is best left out until age 2 because the brain needs time to develop. There aren't any long-term tablet, iPad studies that I am aware of, but I doubt it is beneficial. It's a quick way to entertain a toddler, which is part of the problem. Kids need to learn how to be bored. The alphabet, counting, and reading can wait. Edit, wow. I didn't expect this comment to blow up. I think it's important to note that I am not judging parents who use an iPad to entertain their kids. If that works for you and you think it helps your kid, go ahead and do that. No one is stopping you. My older kids actually do use my wife's iPad on occasion. My 8-year-old has taught himself new songs on the piano, how to ride a unicycle, how to solve a Rubik's Cube, and creates his own Rube Goldberg machines thanks to the internet. He also swims, golfs, bike rides, plays baseball, etc. It's not all or nothing and I agree with that. I just think toddlers, preschoolers are better served interacting with their environment. At best, it makes no difference. At worst, it harms your child. Maybe it won't make a difference, but I am not making my toddler a guinea pig for this experiment. Turns out shielding everyone from risk creates a lower risk acceptance threshold. Not enough sleep. It's already happening, but low fat products. They are jacked up with sugar and not at all healthy for you. Also I'm so happy that this war on fat is coming to an end. I literally eat ghee and avocados all day and lose weight. Edit, I didn't expect my comment to blow up. To clarify, yes I know about caloric intake and its role in weight loss. I also know that fat loss doesn't equate to weight loss and lastly, my comment pertains to the food and pharma industry's attack on healthy fats by claiming that eggs and fish are unhealthy, suggesting that people should consume low fat items which were instead loaded with sugars and not healthy. Millennials reading articles about millennials, written by millennials, to generate ad revenue for baby boomers. Sleep deprivation. God forbid computer screens. Otherwise we're super screwed. Okay, I am going to go ahead and say smoking weed. Before you shower me in down votes. I smoke pot. I love it. However, our lungs are made to take in oxygen, nitrogen and the other elements that make up our atmosphere. Nothing else. Pot is better than cigarettes in the sense that it is not drenched in however many chemicals that cigarettes are. However, smoking is smoking. Your lungs are not made to intake carbon monoxide and ash. Even THC for that matter. I know it's from the earth, and that's great. So is tobacco. Smoking anything is not good for you. Now I hear all you guys typing, nay man I dab and it's healthy BC it's just THC concentrate and there is no carbon monoxide. You are right. But do you think putting what is essential oil so hot it vaporized, in your lungs is a good idea? It sounds like a way to cook them from the inside out. I am no scientist, just a stoner. But that is my two cents. I am an imperfect human so I am going to go light up now. Peace symbol. Also please correct me if I am wrong. Most of this is just things I have collected and manifested myself over the years. 
I hope I am wrong. And I am aware of the medicinal uses of pot. I think edibles are probably the way to go in most cases. The ubiquity of porn. ITT, things we know are bad for us. Internet, computer addictions. Hearing loss isn't going to kill like cigarettes, but we sure beat the hell out of our ears via headphones. Tanning. People generally have accepted that excessive UV exposure is bad for you, but I haven't seen this translate into behavioral changes for society as a whole. Smartphones. It fucks with your spine massively and people injure themselves because they weren't paying attention to the surroundings. Antibacterial soaps may actually be making us antibiotic resistant. Plastics, at least for foodstuffs, i.e. packaging, containers, plates, etc. We keep finding out that certain kinds of things in plastic are harmful to us. The answer so far has been to avoid those particular things, but then we just find the next thing that's bad for us. We know that most plastic leaches chemicals when heated up, yet most people still throw it in the dishwasher. Putting your entire life online and having it all stored forever. There's going to be an embarrassing digital paper trail for the next generation of MPs, senators and diplomats. I'd like to think that we'll get to the stage as a species where it won't matter that you made a comment on Twitter about wanting to eat your girlfriend's ass like a snack cake when you were 19 or because you once sent a photo of your breasts to a partner, but somehow I doubt it. That shit's going to end at least a couple of political careers before they even begin. Edit, ass reduction surgery. Scented toilet paper. Everyone that uses it is going to end up with ass cancer. Sitting for 8 plus hours a day. Hearing loss from earbuds. Please don't be garlic bread. Going on Reddit instead of doing something productive. Edit, yay I got my first 1k plus comment thank you smiley face. I really pray it's not LASIK eye surgery. Sugar. Social media. People who put lemons in a water bottle to detox and end up with acid constantly on their teeth for 8 hours a day. Working 50 to 60 hour weeks and stress is actually bad for you. Validation through likes on social media. I feel like it's something that was developed and with no experimentation was let loose to the public too quickly for our species to grasp. What will society be in 20, 50, 100 years when this generation's children grows up with the pressure of being online since practically birth, and seeing so many people become popular so quickly and consistently, more than any other time in history? That's why it seems like celebrities are dying so often, is because we're so connected that there's so many more people to know about. Just long term, how will our basic, natural psyches evolve because of this? I know there's a lot to unpack here, I just always wonder. Truthfully I wouldn't be surprised if it's pre-workout powders, drinks. Like 7 to 10 years ago when the original Jack 3D came out, I think it's very possible that stuff could have messed my body up more than I suspect. Pre-workouts were basically amphetamines and other who knows junk. Consider subscribing, 